What's going on, my friends? Chris here. I want to bring you all an update today of Bitcoin. And the reason why I want to cover Bitcoin is because right now I believe it's just going to be the full driver of the market. So we really have to pay attention to the movements of Bitcoin because you can see even when Bitcoin had this big retracement or this big drop, Ethereum did as well. So we still have to continue to keep our eyes on Bitcoin as much as possible. You know, I've had a few different people ask me and they say, Chris, do you trade on leverage in the cryptocurrency space? And I do not, guys. And the reason I do not is because of how long the wicks can be in this space. I mean, you can even look and see just up in this area here. And we're, what we're going to cover here is just the wick first. So this wick was roughly almost 10%. So when you're having wicks come in between 10 and sometimes 50% in some of the altcoins, I don't think it's wise to use any leverage in this space. And we continuously see people getting stopped out of their positions or liquidated. And for me, that's not what I want to do. What I like doing is trading altcoins, spot altcoins. I believe that's the way to go because you still have so much volatility and you're not going to get wicked out, essentially. You could still be patient and wait for the market to go back up if you're in a long position. So that's the nice thing about it as opposed to you know, being over leveraged and having these wicks get you and then it ends up ripping to where you thought it was going to end up ripping to. I mean, you can see all these wicks back here, guys. And one thing I, I do like to do to the upside, though, in terms of limit sell orders, I like to put limit sell orders at high areas like a resistance area. And then I like to go a little bit up above it because I like to use these wicks to my advantage. So if, when we get these big pumps to the upside and there's a long wick up there, sometimes you can catch those. And you can sell at that area and then you can buy back a little bit lower and that always helps. But I've had a lot of people asking me if I do leverage in this space and I do not. I I believe it's too risky. And, you know, guys, I'm not a professional in this space. I've done this now for about four years, put in a lot of time studying and working. And for me, unless you're just going to do leverage up to maybe 3x or 5x, when people are doing the 10, 20, 100, all that, I believe that's just, just gambling and I'm not in this space to gamble. So... What I've been looking at here and what has me just a little bit concerned, okay? So we're, I'm not saying that we're in a bear market or anything yet or the top's in. The only thing that has me concerned as I'm continuously looking at this here, so you can see our previous retracements, we've had 32%, we've had 26%, we've had 19%, we just went down 21%. So we still could go down another 10%, guys. We just have to be prepared for that if that's the case. If we don't get a nice bounce out of here on heavy volume. If this is on weak volume, we're most likely going to get another leg to the downside. But what I don't like is how we're kind of stalling out here. So you can see this was our high at about 42,000 and then it was up to around 58,000 and then we only made it up to about 62,000 and then we made it up to about 65,000. So these highs are getting lower. Okay, and these retracements too, they're powerful when they come in. And what we want is that big rip on heavy volume so that we can start making higher highs. But you can see when we've been making these, the volume hasn't even been that great. <clears throat> Excuse me. So one thing I've looked at, many people have asked me, they say, Chris, do you believe the top's in? I don't believe the top's in. And that's just my opinion. And the reason for that is because we haven't seen those topping signs. Like I've talked to you guys, uh, I've studied a lot on distribution tops and climax volume tops and all that. And we haven't seen it. And we basically always had a high volume climax top. Something that would be larger than this. Do you see this large stick of volume here? And this marked the top, the local top right here before we had a 32% sell-off. I'm anticipating a candle that almost looks double the size of that or something that's up in this range here for the very top, that very euphoric top. But I guess the thing is here, and this could be for anybody, do you think, and I would love for you to put it down low, do you think we're going to end with one of those euphoria tops or is this different here and we're just going to get a big rounded top here and we're just going to start going back down and everyone's going to think it's a retracement and we're going to bounce back up and we won't go get over this high and then we get pushed down again. Then it's a low volume push up again and then a heavy volume sell off and that's what we have to be careful of. That's what we have to watch. Okay, so this right here, this is the most important thing what I'm going to be watching is, let me get this out of here, is what type of rebound on volume we get out of here. It's going to be extremely important. So it may be something like this, guys. Let me get a tool here. I'll show you first what we don't want to see. I'm going to take a little bit of time here with everybody today. And if you get some from this and you appreciate me being honest with you all, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. So what I'm looking at is say we have a bounce like this, guys, just a little one up right to here, okay, to this resistance, like it's 61,620, then it would be another flush. 
down maybe to the 100, maybe down even into this area of about 45,000. The lowest on a really massive flush I'd look at is about the 200 moving average down in this range. We would have to hold that, and that's going to be at 3,800. Or I'm sorry, 38,000, excuse me, 38,500. Now, in my opinion, just my opinion, once we start having daily candle closes below the 200 EMA, it's basically going to be over. If that's acting as overhead resistance and we pound on it on low volume, the game's over and we're going to be in a bear market and we're going to flip all of our strategies. But we're not there yet. Like we've talked about, guys, we still may have that big climax top, but we're going to have to see here. There's a few different things that are just making me a little bit more concerned is what I'd say. I just say a little bit more concerned at this time. And we want to see that big heavy volume come in because we want to see the buyers here, especially off this 50 EMA, which we've been finding support off of. See back in this range, we found it here. We didn't even make it to it before we got bought up here. We hit it and then we got bought up and then we're basically at that area right now. Excuse me, guys. Let me get these lines off here for us just so I can show you. So today's candle close right here on the 50. See here in pink? We need a daily candle close up above that. We need to defend that or it's most likely going to be down to the 100 at 48,966. If we get into the technicals, this is the first time in a while we've actually seen this here, guys. So we are getting the sell signal. We have a 12 sell, a 10 neutral, and a 4 buy. Oscillators 2 sell, 9 neutral, and a 0 buy. Moving averages 10 sell, a 1 neutral, and a 4 buy. On the one week, we are still showing a bullish, so a little bit longer term. We're looking good. But in the shorter term here, guys, this is a, a, a pretty critical area here. So if we bounce back out and we really take a look at this, I want everybody's opinion on this. I'm asking this as well, guys. You know, I don't have a crystal ball. I'm going off price action. I've been through one market cycle, the last bull market, and, you know, I, I don't see a climax top yet. I don't see climax volume. I don't see those things. But that doesn't mean that this time couldn't be different. Okay? Not saying it is. But this is definitely something when we're looking at this price action, this is not the most exciting in the world as we're not seeing big expansions of higher highs. If we get into our indicators, we'll take a look, we see if we have any divergence. We have a divergence indicator here, so that's something I always like to pay attention to if we have anything pop up. As of right now, we haven't, but this last area we did where price was going up, we had some bearish divergence there. Let's take a look at our stock. Let's kind of work our way through here. <clears throat> okay, so on the stock, we're at 9 and 30, so that's good. We're not in overbought territories. Like we always talked about the RSI at 41. I really like to see this area defended because typically in these retracements here, we've been getting back <clears throat> or finding a bounce roughly at about 43, 40 to 45, right in that range. So we do need to get moving if we're going to continue this in the shorter term. It's a more short so excuse me, more so the shorter term that I'm talking about. In the macro sense, guys, I, I still think we got a little bit left here. You know, we may close, then the months haven't been beautiful for us here. So we may close April down a little bit if we bounce out to the monthly candles. Okay, so here, I mean, look how many green candles we have had. Guys, what are we? One, two, three, four, five, six. And then this is going to be April here. The relative strengths at 85 and our stocks at 95 and 98. So we truly haven't even had on the monthly scale here a big deep retracement. You know what I mean? So that's something we are going to have to watch for here. And just pointing stuff out here, guys, if I'm looking here, I'm not a, a master in Elliott wave or anything. But what it kind of looks like here is this could have been our one wave up. Here's our two. We did not retrace pack, past the bottom. And then this could be our big three. And then we have a four, which could be a consolidating sideways or another move down before we get a massive fifth wave. You know, that's a possibility as well that I wanted to take a look at here. Just kind of spotting that as we're going through things, looking at stuff on the one month. And then this is the one month right here. You can take a look. All right, let's get into the one week. Okay, on the one week now, our stock's at 6 and 11, and then we're at 66.55 here on the relative strength on the one week. I mean, this has been a great move, guys. We can't be greedy about this stuff, but right now it's just been really moving sideways on lower volume. So we definitely haven't had our max climax volume. I mean, the last time we got up to 20,000, so right here, the market top, 
that according to this chart right here was basically heavier volume than what we've seen for any top so you can see climax volume at the top here and then we had climax bot volume at the bottom here so that climax volume can mark tops and bottoms really well for us you can see over here high volume right at the bottom and then we got moving here look at the top high volume Guys, I, I love volume. It'll tell you so much about what's taking place. But, you know, this is just a sticky situation right now that we're we're looking at. And I think a lot of people over leverage themselves and that can get you into a lot of trouble. So we're going to have to take this day by day. But we also want to continue to be cautious and we want to be realistic in this market as well. OK, because protecting our profits is the number one thing. And then you want to continue to make more from that it's always about that risk to reward guys so if you get some from this don't forget to like subscribe hit that notification bell let me know what you're doing down low god bless each and every one of you take care